Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we are Mario. We are Mario. We are Mario. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We are going to be talking about the news from the week, including the opening of Super Mario World, Super Nintendo World, at Universal Studios Japan. And then on Thursday, we're going to be bidding the Mario 35th anniversary celebration a fond farewell as we look into the future of the franchise. But Mark, in the meantime, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, when you were saying we are Mario over and over, uh-huh. Um, it got me thinking for whatever reason of, uh, have you seen the YouTube video? It's probably maybe like 10 years old at this point, but it's uh, a concert video where somebody replaced the singer with like a little cockroach that's just making like beep, beep, boop, boop noises. And then the foot, then like it keeps cutting away to the footage of fans just like losing their minds. And it's, um, it is, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> No, I felt like I was having a Guardians of the Galaxy related stroke <laughs> while I was reading that. <laughs> having a real like I am Groot uh, situation going on there. Um, no, uh, Mark, that video uh, makes me think of the uh, the reaction thing where there's like people in a bar and they're watching a TV screen. And the original was obviously like soccer or something, right? And that people like get like really tense and then like explode into like celebratory happiness. And how you can put like any video clip on that TV and it's satisfying to see people (laughs) freak out at anything. Uh, the world's okay. Um, speaking of the world being okay, my copy of Sonic Forces. Would you like to borrow it? You can try. All you got to do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. But you got to watch out because uh, there may be. Well, I didn't even say what happens when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Your name goes on a list. I send you my copy of Sonic Forces. You play it for as long as you want. Then you send it back. This is my copy of the game for for the Nintendo Switch. Look out, though. Here's the part where you look out. There may be a copy of Untitled Goose Game in there, because that goose is a prankster. Are both games out in the wild right now? What's the status yes. of this perfect program? Status of program is uh, both games are out. Both games are out there in Sonic Forces boxes, um, and I await their return. But uh, with no amount of... Uh, impatience no amount of expectation they will come back to me when they come back to me um and then the program will continue and it will continue to be perfect uh sadly something that is not perfect a potential debug uh we have to debug ourselves specifically i have to debug myself i think so when apex (laughs) legends on switch was released i can't remember if i said that it had cross progression or not I feel like I said that it had cross progression, but it turns out that that is not the case. Um, oh. So it does have cross play, but it does not have cross progression. And the developers are saying, uh, we intend to do that, but it is far down the road. Like not something that you can expect anytime soon. So if you started this free to play game with the expectation that it would have cross progression because I said it did, then I apologize. But if I didn't say it, then this isn't really a debug, and none of this happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's some of some of this still happened. We still talked about this right now, and right. you still bought the uh, bought. <laughs> You're right, though. It's a free to play game, so like it would. Yeah, be something so I don't that feel that would, bad. Right, you would discover uh, having spent no money. Like, exactly. Oh, this actually isn't cross uh, cross right. progression. Right, and uh, you know, and I also don't think that like uh my brief read of apex legends when it originally released was enough to get people to download it i just don't feel like i have that sort of like persuasion but maybe i do maybe i don't realize the power that i hold here's the problem is that neither you or i know anything about apex legends it's true we We were talking about it (laughs) it's true this is actually the curse uh this is two potential debugs we have on this because uh, yeah. the first one is that uh, there was some confusion as to whether it can be classified as a battle royale game. 
before as a hero shooter. This is the game that neither of us have played, and yet we talk way too much about it. We keep talking about it. It is very much like Rusty's Real Deal Baseball in that regard. (laughs) Though I think we have a better handle on that game. Um, Mark, what... This feels like it is a trend. Why is cross save or cross progression uh, a tricky thing for Switch? Because that was supposed to be a um, a Hades like day one feature um, that you could bring your uh, data over from the Epic Game Store. Um, but they, you know, they eventually did patch it in, but it was like months later. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm sure that it is not technically easy to do. Uh, and I don't understand the details of it, exactly how it works. Like, I'm assuming it is difficult. It has to be. Um, but also, I wonder if it's like, hey, we got to get these, like, games out the door. And yeah. so what features are you going to cut? Well, that's one that, like, doesn't have to be there. Yeah, it does seem like the, the bottom of the wish list where it's like, okay, let's make sure the game works and is fun <laughs> and doesn't destroy people's consoles. Um, and then finally, yeah, at the end of the list, now we can cross because really cross play is probably more important than cross progression right yeah i would think so or at least if i were prioritizing one i would prioritize that over the other but patrick i uh, i think we should leave the door open for us to talk about apex legends more uh in the future only because i was a i should explain myself before Please. i said that we should leave the door open i was about in my mind to say should we close the door on talking about Apex Legends ever again? But I don't think we should do that to ourselves. I think there's <laughs> okay, a good, right. strong chance that there's going to be a third potential debug of uh, something we talked about, Apex Legends related. Possibly we've already said it and we'll, we'll be debugging ourselves. <laughs> oh man, we live in an exciting time. Okay, uh, Mark, let's, <laughs> let's get into what we've been playing this week. Mark, I continue my journey with Fire Emblem Fates Birthright. Um, the game is starting to get to the place where it is a little bit more difficult. Um, and I was... Look, I've reached a point in most Fire Emblem games where... And I, I always play on classic mode, which means permadeath, right? When my characters die, they remain dead. Um, and, you know, you're playing and, like, you do something stupid early in a fight. And you're like, well, okay, I'm just going to start that fight over again. I'm not going to lose a character. I was really deep into a fight in like the, I'm on chapter like 14 or 15 of like 22, I think. So I'm I'm getting, I'm not almost at the end, but like I'm, I'm getting there. And I lost two units, two like low level units, but like two that I'd been like using more recently that like I wanted to like, let's bring these guys into the fold. Let's, you know, I guess maybe in that way I was getting a little bit cocky. Um, and I lost them both. They both died. Uh, and I was like, ah, oh. it was right at the end of the fight too. Um, and so I continued and I saved my progress and, um, you know, it is one of those real things in Fire Emblem where you're like, no other game makes me make this horrible choice, uh, to just let some of my characters die. But I, I respect it for making me make that decision. Do you think that if you, like, if you continue to just, like, restart every time you didn't want to lose a character, because I know you did that for a while, but you said you're, like, kind of reaching toward the end. Do you feel that it's, like, a matter of momentum where it's, like, ooh, if I keep, like, resetting, like, I don't know that I'm going to finish this thing only because I think I'll get, like, bored slash frustrated? Yeah, I mean, I think, I do think that is part of it. But also, like, as I get closer to the end, I have less fear of, like, you know, if I give up two units every chapter until the end of the game, I'll still have like a full party of like, oh god, I love you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like it's also just a resource management thing where I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's it's okay if if these like kind of side characters um die at 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 this point. Yeah, that that makes sense. I guess the reason I bring it up is because uh, so I've been playing Super Mario 3D World, and I yes. took your advice. I went back to playing just as Mario, and I am not messing with the camera. Um, I'm also further in the game. I just am right at the end of world six, whereas I, so I think that's three more worlds than I was last time. And uh, doing, following your advice, just like I did for Super Mario 64, like has definitely, I am definitely enjoying the game more. I don't know why I was like, I'm going to play as Luigi 
maybe I thought that like it wouldn't make that much of a difference, but like it Huge does, difference. like in the movement, yeah. like it really does. Also, like the platforming, like you're right, like some of it gets the levels get a little bit more uh, creative, or at least they introduce new things that I've like enjoyed, like the the platforms that like flip back and forth every time you jump. Like that was yeah. fun to try to like puzzle out. I've, it's only shown up in one level so far. Um, so yeah, I my feelings on the game are a lot uh, brighter than they were like last time we talked. But uh, for me, I re- I finally realized um, that like you have to get the top of the flagpole to get the gold flag. And so mm-hmm. I'm so I was like looking back at old levels and I was like, ooh, I didn't get the stamp there. I didn't get the gold flag. Should yes. I go back and like do it? And then I was like, no, I don't want to go back. Like, right now, I want to treat it like I did Odyssey, where I, like, get... Because th- what ended up happening is, in Odyssey, I was trying to get, like, as many moons as I can before right. moving on. And what I realized at the end, once I beat the story part of it, was like, oh, what I really should have done was just beat the story as fast as possible, and then go back, because so much more opens up. And I think that's what I'm going to do with Super Mario 3D World, because I'm worried, just in my own, like, gaming habits, that if I start going back and trying to perfect level by level now, I'm going to get frustrated and like lose momentum instead of just being like, Oh, I should just keep making forward progress. And then I can eventually like go back and pick up that stuff when like I'm in the mood to do it. Yeah. And I mean, this game doesn't have the same like kind of, uh, you know, explosion in, in new content when, when you beat it that, you know, makes you uh, revisit earlier levels, but uh, there is, um, you know, if you are going for like completionist sake, the the game is sort of invisibly keeping track of which characters you finish each level with. Um, and so, but by the time you reach like the very end of the game, you will see in your little like record book, um, what levels have not been beaten by which characters, and so you want to like go through and and finish all of those. And doing that can be a fun way to pick up, you know, the the extra star you left behind, oh, the extra uh-huh. top of the flagpole. Um, you know, all, all of that sort of stuff. And just also, like, as you're playing, um, you know, you encounter those buttons that only certain characters can, right, can yeah. press. Um, and, like, those, you know, leave that, pick it up on the next time through, and then play as the princess, and, like, that's, you know, that, that, that's fine. Um, it's, uh, you know, again, not that there's, like, a bunch of replayability to, to all the levels, um, but there is something, like, kind of fun and novel about, like, jumping back into the level uh, when you don't need to get, when, like, all you need to do is get the top of the flagpole, and you're like, all right, now it's Luigi. Uh, and, like, he doesn't have to get stars. He just books it to the end uh, and mm-hmm. then, like, you know, jumps up as high as he can to hit the top of that flagpole. Um, I have also been playing Super Mario 3D World. Specifically, Sarah and I have been working on the Champion's Road, which is the final, final, final level um, that you have to have gotten all the all the other stars, all the stamps, and all the tops of the flagpoles in all of the uh, regular worlds to even unlock the area. Um, Champions Road is a super difficult uh, challenge, like platforming challenge, enemy based challenge, um, and there are no checkpoints, there are no power ups. It goes on and on and on. Um, so she and I loaded up on uh, over nine hundred lives. Um, and played <laughs> played the game for a long time on Saturday night and for a long time on Sunday. Um, and finally, Sunday evening uh, at like 9.30, almost 10 o'clock, uh, we beat it with uh, Rosalina and Mario. Um, feeling really good about it, uh, especially because in co-op, you know, one of the things about <laughs> Super Mario 3D World is that like you get in each other's ways all the time, right? Like... The, the multiplayer is, it's crowded. You're, you're in a sort of big space, but as, when you're doing, like, tight platforming, you are going to be bouncing each other, like, all around the place. Um, and the fact that we were able to get to the end of this level was just, like, it's a nightmare. It's so difficult to beat it co-op. Um, and, like, you have the added advantage of, like, if one person dies and the other one stays put, um, then, like, it's okay and you can continue progressing through the level. So in some ways it's easier, but in a very real way, it is so much harder. I can't imagine trying to do precision platforming like uh, in co-op. Uh, I mean, it's it's crazy. There are times when like I'll pick her up and like do some of the platforms and like other times where uh, she does the platforming and I just bubble on over, you know? Um, so like there are some like little tr- uh, tips and tricks, but the whole thing ends with 
uh, this like boost pad extravaganza where just the platform is just boost pad, boost pad, boost pad. So they're just running and you get that little like explosion sound effect just over and over and over again. Uh, while there are um, those sort of like radial um, like laser things that just like pulse out in, in a mm-hmm. circle. Um, and you have to collect uh, key coins, <laughs> oh, five key coins, just buzzing around this thing. And it is just so chaotic and hard and there's two characters boost boost um it's chaos um but it is super rewarding to actually finish it now you guys have finished it on the wii u version right this is true yes we have and so when you did that was that also in co-op and was it easier was it harder because like the characters are faster in the switch version did it not really make a difference that you were able to notice yeah, I I mean I noticed the difference in that like I had to rethink my approach to it, right? Because like I had the sort of like timing down for for Mario at least um on on the Wii version I had, or the Wii U version I just had to like change my approach to it. In this one, I don't know if it was easier or harder. In both versions of the game, like I committed entire afternoons to it and uh seeming got, got like frustratingly nowhere. Um and had to like revisit uh, on on a separate occasion to actually get through it. One last question: What is Rosalina's like character movement when you unlock her? Is she like a uh, peach where she like floats a little bit, or what is her thing? Yeah, this is a, a very good question. And uh, I guess maybe sorry, spoiler: uh, if Rosalina is a character that you unlock <laughs> later in the game, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> way way too late. <laughs> but I think she she's in the promotional material for the um for the uh the Switch version, um. But so yeah, she's uh she does not have um Peach's uh like glidey jump. I believe she jumps a little bit higher. Um, but her big thing is that she has a spin attack, like a, a Super Mario Galaxy style. Oh, okay. So when you push like the the B button in the air and she gets like a little a tiny bit of an extra jump and like attacks. Uh, and she can also do that on the ground to just like sort of hit uh people in front of her. It means that her like extra specialness sort of goes away. When you when she gets like, you know the uh, the cat suit or a fire flower or like mo- most of the power ups sort of render her special ability kind of pointless. Like she doesn't get the extra jump um, when you've got the kitty claws, right? Um, but yeah, that's that's how that that's how she plays. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So uh, the other thing I've been playing this week is Hypno Space Outlaw. This is a game that was released on Switch a few months ago. And I was interested, I was intrigued by it then, but didn't pick it up. But this past week, uh, Bioshock, the Bioshock collection was on sale for 20 bucks. And I was really tempted, but it, Hypnospace Outlaw is 20 bucks irregularly. So I'm like, should I buy the Bioshock collection, the games that like I will then own, but probably I don't know when I'm actually going to revisit it, or should I spend yeah, it on point. this game that I'm interested in? So I decided to pick up Hypnospace Outlaw. Basically, the... The game functions as like you are a moderator essentially on this online world called uh, Hypno S, like Hip No O S or whatever. And okay, right, um, right. and so you're you're tasked with like track. And I'm I just finished the first chapter, so I've played maybe an hour of the game at most, and I feel like there is more to come that like I haven't experienced yet in like the way you interact with the world and what the whole thing means but basically i you act as like a moderator and you're tasked with like hunting down certain things so it's like um copyright infringement or uh bullying or that kind of stuff and you're like a moderator but it all has this very like early 90s um early internet geo cities you know like angel fire web angel fire. aesthetic <laughs> and um yeah and it's it's interesting in the beginning i didn't really understand what i was doing and at first i was like this feels like i should be playing it in handheld mode so i can like use the touch screen um so i actually used a guide at the beginning because i I felt like a little bit lost but i just realized that i wasn't like using the tools that they gave me correctly and once like i figured out oh because it's something like okay i need you're tasked with hunting down this certain like character and uh you need to like find five violations of this copyright being infringed or whatever. And so, yeah. you know, and then you get onto this essentially, you know, like worldwide web and it was overwhelmed with content to be like, how am I supposed to find these? And once I l- looked and I was like, oh, clearly 
like you can use the search function and just search for the character name and then you know like do that kind of stuff it made it a lot clearer and i was able to make forward progress it's really interesting i wouldn't even say that it's fun at this point like i'm not having fun hmm. but i uh the whole like the systems and everything are intriguing and so i'm interested in for it to become like what I'm assuming is going to be the next thing and to like reveal itself to be more than what it is now. Um, but I'm like enjoying it so far, the world that they've built, like the amount of content and how like true it is to being like an angel fire, like early web thing without just like, uh, it really captures the spirit of that time without actually just like um, copying the aesthetic and everything. Sure. And so it, it's, it's really cool. I'm excited to see where it goes. Um. That's a uh, that that's really cool. I'm I'm very interested by um the the fact that you uh were using a guide right from the beginning. Um, are, are you hoping that like once you get your feet wet that you let the guide go, or do you feel like this is a a, a guide all the way kind of? Game? No, I feel like I'm at the point where I don't need it anymore. It really okay. was just like getting through that barrier of being like I don't even understand how I'm yeah, like what you're doing how yeah. how I'm how I'm supposed to like find the content that it wants me to find in this sea of content without it taking so long. And again, yeah. once I realized like, oh, it is as simple as like, they give you the tools to do it. I just wasn't putting together like how to use the tools to like search for the keyword and bookmark the sites, like all that yeah. kind of stuff. Once I figured that out, it's like, oh, now that I know the tool set and I understand what I'm supposed to do or like how I can use it, I don't feel like I need the guide as much. But like it, it, um, it operates the game like so much like a operating system where especially one from the early days where like going to certain websites downloads viruses and so the whole like operating system starts acting weird and you can buy and download cool. um you know like antivirus software to remove that stuff and then when you download a file from like an email or a website it goes into the download folder and you have to go into there double click oh, it funny. to open it and you have to like you have to manually delete each one, and so it's uh yeah, it's just like it's a really interesting idea, and again, I'm ex interested to see what that next like element to it is. Um, I didn't talk about this on last week's news episode, but um, that that week I had picked up the um demo for um A Train, um the city management oh, simulator, uh -huh. um and. I got myself in a situation where I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't really understand how to like interact with this, this interface. And it is another one where it felt like I probably should have been playing it in both a in handheld mode and B with uh, a guide to just sort of like hold my hand through the first couple steps. Um, and then maybe would understand more like your experience with, um, uh, Hypnospace Outlaw makes me think that I should go back to trying um, um, a train all aboard tourism again with just like a different mindset and a different set of tools. Yeah, I feel like when it just like, like with Hypnospace, it just threw so much at me at the beginning. Yeah. And like you're going through and you're like, okay, I get it, I get it. But then you actually have to like put it into practical use. You're like, yeah. uh, for me, I was like, uh, <laughs> what do I do? Like, how am I supposed to figure this out? <laughs> right. And right, so I, right. need, I needed that like uh, element of somebody being like, basically like tutorialing me through that first level so that I could continue to do it myself. Yeah. It is funny. Like there was a tutorial at the beginning of a train. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you just like, you're like, yeah, yeah, I get, it. I know how to play games. And then as soon as the tutorial was over, I was like, I don't know what to do. I know. I was like, Oh no. Like, how can I do the tutorial again? <laughs> Come back tutorial. <laughs> but like in some ways you do need to spend a little time with something before you know what you don't know. Right. Yeah, like totally. You, you need to mess around with it before the tutorial starts. Um, well, that's cool. I I'm, I'm excited to hear more about Hypnospace Outlaw. Um, quick note here: uh, if you are still playing Animal Crossing, you should go in and get your one year anniversary cake. Um, it is in your inbox. Nintendo delivers it to you. Uh, it's a cute little cake that looks like a slice of your island, and it's uh, it's adorable. And I got a little emotional uh, getting my cake. Um, so uh, th th this week, I also uh, I got my my first shot for the uh, vaccination. Um, I got it on Thursday, and that was a very like, my God, it's been a year, uh, and like That's maybe wild. there's light, the time maybe there's that, light yeah. on the I know, um, and to just like that Animal Crossing has been a, a constant for me through all of this as well. Um, I don't know, it it's hard for me not to link the two in in my brain, and so to have 
uh, both the celebratory cake and the uh, first shot of the Moderna here. Uh, I don't know. It all it, it all feels like a nice um, single package. Uh, and man, get vaccinated if you can. It's uh, it's. I mean, if everyone knows, uh, but like, it's it's safe and good, and you'll feel great. Um, I mean, you'll actually feel kind of crappy the next day, but that's a different. <laughs> you you will you will feel an enormous wave of relief, or at least I did. Um, I was waiting for them to release me, just sitting in in my car, because you have to wait around for like fifteen minutes to you know see if you have an, a a reaction to it. Um, and I was just sitting in the car, sort of uh, crying by myself, and was like, "This is this is great. I love I, I I love this." Um, and I, also, you can I get a feel... cake in Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel for me like. I I think it's lucky, like very fortuitous timing that Animal Crossing came out when it did, not just because like in the moment it was wonderful to play with like everybody, but I also think like for me, like looking back on last March would be much darker if I didn't have like yeah. Animal Crossing and like that like feeling of like connectedness and just fun of exploring the game with everybody happening at that same time. Yeah, absolutely. All right. That's what we've been playing this week and all this last year <laughs> let's get into what what the new releases and what we might be playing next week today march 23rd story of seasons pioneers of olive town is released on the switch as is uh harvest moon one world um the the far east dlc um it, it's it's crazy that there's a story of seasons and a harvest moon uh, release on the same day yeah totally and then also that day is or i guess today is overcooked all you can eat which is overcooked one overcooked two and all the dlc is that right that is correct all of the overcooked you could possibly play this is almost i mean uh, i i i love overcooked um they are great games to play if you have someone that you want to uh have a shouting match with as you play a cooperative game together <laughs> if if you can do friendly shouting with someone uh i 100 percent recommend overcooked this almost feels like too much overcooked in a single package i like the limitations of like you just have one thing of overcooked and you can play it and like you'll get to the end of it and be like okay we've hit that difficulty spike now we can uh stop and we don't have to we can spend a couple nights not yelling at each other but this is uh <laughs> this is overcooked that doesn't stop <laughs> it's a real problem mark and then tomorrow march 24th tales from the borderlands is released on switch this is the uh tell tale adventure game set in the borderlands mm -hmm. universe that is coming to switch um on thursday march 25th a game called Mazem, The Phantom of the Opera, which is a point-and-click adventure game uh, set in the world of The Phantom of the Opera. And, like, uh, on um, the Switch eShop, this, I am very tempted. This is two things that longtime listeners of this show know that I love. These, like, detective games. And then, like, Phantom of the Opera. Um, yep. I, uh, I'm tempted. I don't know if I'll end up doing it, but, uh, I am comforted to know that it's always there when I'm looking for some game. I mean, it's definitely on my wish, wish list. If that thing goes on sale, if I get a good price, I'm definitely there picking it up. There you go. That's smart. Of the That's smart. Game. Wait, wait, wait for the good price. And then on Friday, uh, a big release, Monster Hunter Rise is released for the Switch. Uh, and also Balin, Balin Wonderworld, the, uh, Square Enix platformer, uh, the demo apparently was pretty rough. They've promised a day one patch to address some of the issues, but uh, I, d I don't know about this game. It doesn't help that, like, um, I can never remember if it's Balin Wonderland or Wonder World. Yeah, well, and I think it is definitely Balin or, like, Balin. I think it's supposed to sound like balance um, because the, and we'll get to it when we get to the news, but the, uh, in the trailers for it, they kept saying the balance of Balance Wonder World. Like, I think it's a, a play oh. on words. I think it's a play on words, but I don't know. It's hard to tell. Got it. Also, we're getting a bounty of Amiibo on Friday. So from Monster Hunter, you're getting the Palamute, the Magnamalo, and Palico. And from the Smash Brothers series, you're getting Banjo and Kazooie, Byleth, and Terry Bogard. Which uh, finishes out, right? Yeah, that finishes out the uh, first fighter pack. 
um for the uh the the, the smash dlc characters um i don't think we've seen uh, or have any information about the new set of uh of amiibo for uh dlc fighters um but it's cool that these are finally coming out i'm tempted by that banjo kazooie one it is fun i it's kind of crazy to me the lead time on these um smash brother amiibo it's like they don't really start it feels like they don't really start the production process until they've been announced maybe to, to prevent them from leaking early probably i guess is what it is yeah I, it's, it's probably to keep them from yeah keep them from leaking a and b like until they're you know that when uh when we see those uh sakurai videos where he's like talking through the characters it, it always says like you know not final designs this is a work in progress um so like i think it, it is possible that they are waiting until they are releasing the character and then they know for sure that's what the character is going to look like so they can start production oh of, interesting of the amiibo. yeah 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 it's just it just feels crazy because like terry bogard like that was like before the pandemic like it just feels so long ago that that was announced man is that true it must be that must be true oh man mark there's also an ubisoft sale going on right now um and it (laughs) i mentioned to mark before we started rolling that it seems like there's maybe always an ubisoft sale um or at least very frequently uh but this one is maybe uh, notable for uh, a couple reasons, but one uh, most of all is that Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is down to ten bucks for the vanilla version, or thirteen fifty nine for the uh, game with the, the the gold edition that comes with um, the DLC. A couple other things: Fe- uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising is fifty uh, percent off, so it's uh, thirty bucks is normally sixty. Uh, Rayman's Le- Rayman Legends Definitive Edition is uh 10 bucks um which is a, a good deal that's a good game uh scott pilgrim versus the world is back down to 11.99 it's normally 14.99 i think this is the time that i i pick up scott pilgrim versus the world uh because i talked such a good game about uh buying it uh when it was coming out and didn't um yeah is, is there anything on this list that uh you're interested in mark um nothing that i'm looking to pick up although immortals phoenix rising for 30 bucks uh that is kind of tempting yeah i mean like the, there was a, a sale recently where it was like a third off so it was still like 42 or so, so, something like that but yeah all the way down to 30 is pretty dramatic uh and yeah sort of caught my interest there um all of these prices are in effect until the end of the month uh all right mark let's get out of the new releases <laughs> Now it is time for a regular segment on our show. It is time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or group of performers didn't play their instruments for 4 minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So, for the duration of one performance, 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Um, We are going to be sticking close to uh, the, the topic, though. Uh, we are discussing Sony or Microsoft exclusives that we love, as suggested by Benton and Brian for our 433 episode. Um, Mark, what what are what what kind of franchises come to mind uh, when we say Microsoft or Sony exclusives that we love? Uh, for me, I really loved the Infamous franchise on PlayStation. Yeah. Um, I I really liked the first game. Um, the second game, I don't have a ton of memories of. But the third, but like warm feelings, I guess, like I remember enjoying it. The third game or the one on uh, PlayStation 4, this like launch title, uh, Second Son. I really like that one. That's a franchise that like, I don't really understand why we're not continually just getting new infamous games. Like I I loved it. I thought it was, I I really liked that franchise. Yeah. I also really liked uh, Infamous. Um, I almost have like an inverse relationship to, uh, to you in that I never finished the first one. I really liked the second one. I really liked the the two separate mm-hmm. um like other heroes that you could sort of like align yourself with or I guess uh yeah, the like two different power sets um that sort of turn the morality of the first one into like a power set chasing um thing which was cool. Um yeah, I I, I like those games a lot too. The just the way you move around the the cities is is so neat. Yeah, it was so satisfying. Um 
Yeah, I, I don't really, I can't think of any Microsoft exclusive franchises that I like really loved or played a lot of. Yeah, so I, I am currently borrowing a friend's um, Xbox One uh, that he brought over so we could play Sea of Thieves together. Um, and so I'm playing Sea of Thieves. It's fine. Um, the game is, uh, most of the gameplay is that it is like clunky and like hard to do anything. So you really have to like work together. Um, sailing a ship, you have to like trim the sails and someone has to be like down checking the map and someone else has to be steering the thing. Um, so it, it's mostly just like a fun vehicle to like make you communicate with your friends. Um, but so I, I am enjoying that. Uh, and then uh, I'm also enjoying Battletoads, which is now an Xbox exclusive um, uh, on on the uh, on the Xbox one. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's so I guess they're all rare games. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I I feel like out of the two of us, you're probably a bigger Naughty Dog fan than I am. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, de- yeah. Yes. I mean, if, we, if we're talking back about uh, PlayStation games, I, I really like the um, Uncharted and, and, and Last of Us series. Loved playing um, Last of Us Part Two last year. Um, that game is really good and really affecting and and moving. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk uh, since the PlayStation Five came out about um, the Astrobot uh, Astro's Playroom, um, which I have not had a chance to play yet. But I really do love um, Astrobot Rescue Mission uh, for the PlayStation VR. That is a great. Uh, platformer and a great like application of VR. Did I ever make you play it, Mark? No, I've I haven't played it. I in fact oh, I'm not sure that good. I I'm not sure that I had a chance to check out your VR at all. Um, it's uh when when someday we return to anything resembling normal, um, you know, I, I'll 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 you you should come over and and play it. Are there other uh like PlayStation games that uh, come to mind for you as games that you really like? You know, I haven't played the last couple of games in the series. Um, like, I didn't play the reboot, but I, re- I enjoyed God of War uh, quite mm. a bit. I like that series. Um, like, I played through the first three, I think. I've played all three. Um, yeah. I like that a lot. There are games that are kind of like Sony and Microsoft exclusives in the sense that they've never come to a Nintendo franchise. I feel like that too. doesn't count. I feel like you can't talk about Shadow of Mordor. You can't talk about games. Batman. You can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I feel like there have to be others, but I am kind of drawing, um, kind of drawing a blank. I feel like there must be so RPGs wait, have like you... up the wazoo. Oh yeah, that, I'm sure. Uh, uh, so have have you? So you you said you have not played uh, God of War twenty eighteen, the most no, recent I ha- God of War. I haven't. Oh, you know, I it's I, so I, good, Mark. I know you liked it. I know I know that it was well received. I it did not appeal to me on like any level. Oh man, it's uh the the combat in that game is something you have to like wrap your head around and like figure out. But once you do, um, it's so satisfying and so fun and like throwing this uh axe that comes back to you like it's mjolnir um just rules and feels so good there's other like sony stuff that i feel like i like the last couple years i just haven't played a lot of well i guess we'll never know i guess we will in fact never know um man what 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 a bummer way to end that one we were accompanied today by the musical instrument uh by the ensemble Uh, and ensemble at the Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix. All right, Mark, let's get into the news. Square Enix? Square Enix? Patrick, let's determine once and for all the NCS style guide. Are we going Enix or Enix? Let's go Enix. Let's go Enix. Let's go Square Enix. Enix. Okay, I'm I'm on board. So Square Enix... I feel like it it flows better, right? Like, otherwise you have to go Square Enix. Enix. It, it there's like a pause between it, but this way you just go Square Enix. Enix. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Square Enix. I'm into, I'm into it. So Square Enix had a big, big presentation last week. Um, the majority of the news was not Nintendo related, but there were a couple of Switch games that they talked about. Um, of course, first like Balan Wonderworld, uh, was shown off in a trailer that focused on co-op play. That again is coming out on Friday. Uh. Darius Cosmic Revelation, a collection included G Darius HD and Darius Burst, another Chronicle EX Plus 
uh, two spaceship shoot 'em ups that like I've, I have never heard of before and don't intend to hear of ever again. Yeah, I mean, th- there were a couple of like Taito, um, like uh, Square Enix slash Taito announcements in here. Uh, like, th- there's a there's a Space Invaders one where they're doing like a, a Space Invaders AR game on phones, which seems sort of interesting to me. Um, I forget that Taito is a part of um, Square me too, Enix now. Completely, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, just just wanted to include the the Darius uh, Cosmic Revelation uh, news in there for kind of kind of more for that purpose, just to be like, hey. Don't forget, Taito is part of, uh, of Square Enix now. <laughs> Two collections of older games were announced. Uh, Tomb Raider Definitive Survivor Trilogy was announced. We talked uh, before this presentation last week, speculated a little bit like what we might see from Tomb Raider. Um, I was hoping for a collection of classic games, not getting that here. And yeah, <laughs> I mean, and uh, we're well. We are getting a collection of the newer games, uh, not on Switch. It's it's not coming to Switch, which is a a weird bummer because the first of these was a a PlayStation Three slash Xbox Three Sixty game, right? Oh, oh, was it? Oh, I think you're right. I think it was. I think it was before the PlayStation Four. That's crazy. That's kind of crazy to me. And uh, the other collection like this is the Life is Strange collection. They also announced a new Life is Strange game. Um, Neither of those were announced for Switch either. So all in all, not a a huge presentation for Switch owners, which we were kind of expecting given the list of games that they touted before the presentation. Yeah, and like it definitely was a more like, you know, Western studio focus. Um, You know, we we saw like Hit, excuse me, Hitman stuff uh outriders uh and like a, a couple other things did you watch this presentation I, I watched the whole thing it was like it was another uh case where i was like oh yeah i forget that when i watch the majority of like video game publisher presentation that 90 percent of them are just going to be gun violence that like it's just going to be people shooting each other and i'm like i have no interest in watching that yeah i i watched the end of it so i didn't see the whole thing but i caught the re- like the announcement for Forsaken, which I think was something that they had shown off previously at maybe like the PlayStation yeah. 5 um, reveal, but uh, now has like a title. And uh, I don't, I, I, like it looked visually really nice. I, I don't really know what to make of it, but um, it looked cool. Yeah, formerly Project Athia. Um, weird that they announced that they announced that it was going to be a thing with like a a project name and then the next time they talked about it they had a name for it yeah 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 i don't know nintendo and pokemon go developer niantic have announced a new partnership to jointly develop new apps and games the first of which is a pikmin themed app that will encourage walking Uh, the app will be released later this year and is the first game from niantic's tokyo studio here's the entire text from the tweet it says quote What would it be like to have a more fun walking experience surrounded by Pikmin? In a new mobile app developed by Niantic Labs and Nintendo coming later in 2021, explore the real world and create memories with your Pikmin friends. So there you go. Uh, You can sign up for, uh, you know, notifications, I guess, uh, uh, about about the game um, from that tweet. Uh, Mark, what what, what do you think here? Uh, Is this... Are, are you interested in this? Like, I think we both messed around with Pokemon Go for like a minute and then bounced off it. Um, is Pikmin more of a draw for you? Less of a draw for you? I think this will, I mean, just like my relationship with mobile games, I'm sure this is something that I'll right. check out because it's Nintendo related. I don't know how much um, I will end up putting into it. But I think what's interesting to me about this is one, like, I think this is at least the third company that Nintendo has announced a relationship with to develop um, mobile games. And also, I feel like this is the first time, there was a while a couple of years ago, where Nintendo was consistently announcing and releasing mobile games like every yeah. few months. And it's been a long stretch where we haven't really heard anything from these other partnerships that they've had with other companies. Um, wow, is it since uh, Dr. Mario World? Is that, is that the last one we got? It's the last one that I can think of. Yeah, it's possible wow. that Dr. Mario World was the last one. Um, so yeah, so that is interesting to me to see like what other form Nintendo's mobile offerings are taking. 
maybe because I mean, obviously they there's a really good thing going with Pokemon Go, but I also wonder if like they obviously they feel less pressure to pump out like mobile games now yeah. that the Switch is so big. Yep. Yesterday, March 22nd, marked the ninth anniversary of the release of Kid Icarus Uprising in Japan. Kid Icarus Uprising is the Nintendo 3DS game. Uh, Ninth anniversaries aren't exactly something we encourage celebrating here. We're already pushing the limits with 35th anniversaries. Uh, but the oh, game's director, anniversaries. <laughs> <laughs> but the game's director Masahiro Sakurai took to Twitter to acknowledge the game's birthday with a screenshot from Smash Brothers. Um, he also mentioned that he gets frequent requests for a sequel or a remake of the game, but added that it would be quote difficult. So, um, happy anniversary, happy birthday <laughs> to uh, Kid Icarus Uprising. Yeah, uh, we we tip our hat to you, game that we will probably never see again on uh, a, a a new hardware. Although, um, Mark, can can I share with you a a dream that I had uh, that uh, may be prophetic? Remember, about this time last year, I predicted that Nintendo would make a new Game and Watch. I do. Oh my gosh, I do. Okay, all right. Uh, chills ran down That's my spine, precedent. but I am ready. There to, we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm I am ready to hear this. So my my wandering mind while I was falling asleep had a flash of um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, w- w- there are rumors, of course, about there being a, a new Switch in development. We know that there's going to be uh, that Nintendo is predicting another record year for uh, profits um, in their 2021, 2022 um, fiscal year. Um, so my prediction right now is that there they're going to release another piece of hardware that is not a new switch we will get a new switch eventually um but this will be the nintendo lh 3d legacy handheld 3d so it'll be a nice construction 3ds with uh you know the the ports to plug in ds 3ds and game boy and game boy advance games it'll play all of the handheld library uh, it can plug into your uh, Switch dock, and they're going to beef up the uh, Virtual Console Store to include Super NES and Nintendo 64 games, and that's where all of the legacy cons- uh, content is going to live so they can just move forward on the Nintendo Switch. You madman. You absolute this, madman. Yes. Yes. I I am so grateful that you're using your prophetic powers for chaotic good because yeah, who am, who am I like after a year where a new Game and Watch came out, like who am I to say that this is not going to happen? Nobody. Look, and I don't choose the predictions, the predictions choose me. <laughs> is this something I think is going to happen? No, it is something the universe said, Patrick, this is going to happen. Yeah, you are merely the vessel through which this information right. is passing. Yeah, I completely understand. Also, so yes, I want to acknowledge uh, that is amazing. I am now. I will be down on my knees every day praying for that right. to come true. Um, also, just wanted to acknowledge how funny it is to me that Masahiro Sakurai uh, celebrated Kid Icarus's uprising, Kid Icarus Uprising's birthday, with a screenshot from a completely from not other that game. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But another game that he worked on with the character in it. So, like, okay. Yeah. Yep. I, it's even uh, funnier to me that he celebrated its uh, its anniversary by being like, I don't want to make another one. <laughs> like, there's, an, uh, there's, like, a, a, t- a twinge of complaining about it. I love it. <laughs> uh, speaking of anniversaries, a blog post on the Capcom website celebrated Resident Evil... 20, Resident Evil's 25th anniversary uh, with the announcement of an April showcase for new games and content from the Resident Evil universe. Um, quote, First up, we have a major announcement to kick things off. A new Resident Evil showcase will be dropping this April. We don't want to spoil any surprises, so we'll leave it to all of you to speculate on what this upcoming presentation might contain. If you're itchy for tasty new info, keep an eye on Resident Evil social channels on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for all the latest. Two things we need to shout out on this. First, love the itchy, tasty reference in the uh, blog post here. Uh, a great reference to the original Resident Evil. Um, 
but then also uh, the fact that they say, we don't want to spoil any surprises, so we'll leave it to all of you to speculate on what's, uh, what the upcoming presentation might contain. What? <laughs> the, the, telling, telling their fan base to speculate? Guys. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> That's one way to harness the hype cycle. <laughs> um, uh, you know, so there, there haven't been, uh, you know, a lot of... Um, like new Resident Evil games coming to uh, Switch. In fact, uh, all of the games, all of the Resident Evil games that have come to Switch have been uh, ports or re-releases in in one form or another. So it is not likely that we're going to get too many other... uh, It's not likely that there's going to be Switch news uh, coming out of this. Um, But, you know, it's it's always possible. Um, And, you know, uh, Capcom does have a history of, of working with Nintendo. And, you know, uh, Resident Evil 4 was originally a GameCube exclusive. So um, it's, there's always a possibility that there's uh, something Nintendo may come out of this. Yeah, there, there's a rumor that, you know, Capcom has been working on a new Resident Evil title that's separate from Village that is planned for Switch later this year. I just don't see them doing anything that gets in the way of like hype for resident evil village um yeah, and so i so i i feel like this will probably focus on uh like the reverse like multiplayer maybe some like other like smaller things there's like a new movie coming out this year like that kind of stuff and i bet we'll get another presentation maybe around e3 maybe something like that that drops a little bit more of like what else is coming this year but also, they told us to speculate, so um, I guess that, that's going to be homework to our listeners. Speculate about what may be in this Resident Evil presentation, and then email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Hey, Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Japan is finally open for real. The opening ceremony was held, led last week by Shigeru Miyamoto and J.L. Bonnier, who's Chief Executive Officer and Representative Director of Universal Studios Japan. And it also featured a bunch of uh, the costume mascots that they have there. Uh, photos showed Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad, who is like two Marios wide. He is a very, it's a very <laughs> wide Toad. Yeah, it's a wide, it's a wide costume. Yeah, well, well the, the other ones like are approaching like human uh, proportions. Uh, the Toad not at all the toad is like hardcore costume character like someone is sweating inside that thing (laughs) uh miyamoto led a chant of we are mario before guests were allowed to explore the park which feels like a um uh like under different circumstances would be like disturbing but is uh wonderfully charming when it's coming from miyamoto yeah, well, and also when the subject is Mario, right? Like <laughs> Mario is he's he's just a he's a jump sprite, like right. All all he does is uh, run around and enjoy movement. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm fine with us all chanting, "We are Mario." Um, I'm just imagining Mario has like no ideology, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining like the uh, video game panic of like the late '80s, early '90s, <laughs> and you know, just like footage of you know on like right. uh inside edition of miyamoto like chanting forcing people to chant we are mario i mean also we're saying chanting it was probably more of like a chant cheer right like people were probably like excited <laughs> they weren't we are mario you know you know what i'm saying like <laughs> i do i do i bet i bet um, it was okay i bet i bet it was okay <laughs> last week sony interactive entertainment announced that it had acquired evo the premier fighting game tournament. Uh, it's in like collaboration with another company that I don't have written down here, but it's like a joint venture yeah, RTS, that Sony yeah. is part of. Yeah, that is um, acquiring Evo. Evo Online 2020 was canceled last summer amid revelations about abuse within the fighting game community, and its future was uncertain uh, in its current form. Like, would Evo even continue? Um, PlayStation has clearly stated their commitment to the safety of their community. But there are no details yet available on like how what like the rules will be, how the um uh, uh contest tournament, that's the word I was looking for, yeah. is going to be conducted. Um, you know, when we talked about this last year, Evo being canceled, and it was kind of happening around the same time as uh like Nintendo not allowing Smash Brothers to be used at other tournaments and stuff like that. Um 
And you talked at the time about like what Nintendo, it felt like what what Nintendo wanted was like there to be an adult that is like, you know, like somebody in a, like in a position of authority who is like responsible. And because Nintendo is very, very particular about like who it's associated with. And so I feel like Sony like stepping in and kind of being that adult means that it is more likely that in the future we would see Smash Brothers at a tournament like this than before. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, it, 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 is, it is certainly, like, Evo in its, its previous incarnation was a, you know, a community-led, like, a fan-led thing, which meant that, you know, a, a, in terms of, like, getting people together to play games, like, yeah, they were, they were great at that um, and great at, like, organizing people to get together and have these tournaments. But with like a total lack of uh, like oversight or like you say, an adult in the room or someone who, you know, just agrees to be responsible um, when responsible yeah. isn't just like booking a ballroom or something. Um, and yeah, to, to see uh, Sony um, and by extension PlayStation um, like take the reins of this and that they're going to try to steer um, this and like the fighting game uh, community in a specific direction that has simply got to be more organized. Um, and, and more responsible by virtue of the fact that it's uh, owned by um, this huge multinational corporation um, is is encouraging. Uh, I uh, called out in uh, the the news item here that they they do state like you know it, uh, the safety of our participants in the community is of the utmost import. There aren't any details at the moment as to how they plan to uh, ensure people's safety or um, like how exactly they're going to execute on that vision. But I hope it is something that they are taking very seriously Um, because they're just, you know, as there are in most uh, power structures, uh, lots of opportunities for um, abuse and for people to be taken advantage of. Um, So I'm I'm glad that there is, you know, finally an adult in the room. Yeah, and and it's nice that Evo, I feel like it was kind of like saved because I don't imagine that in its previous incarnation that it was going to be able to like move forward. And I know that that's like yeah. a b- large, like beloved community. Um, Evo Online 2020 is already planned for uh, August, uh, August 6th to 8th, and August 13th through 15th. It's online again. Um, I don't, I don't think there's any in-person component, but the lineup includes Mortal Kombat 11, Tekken 7, Street Fighter 5 Championship Edition, and Guilty Gear Strive. Uh, more games will probably be announced later. Notably, of course, Smash Brothers is not on the list right now. Nintendo did put out a statement around this that reads, quote, we will continue to assess Evo and other opportunities as we plan for future online and offline Super Smash Brothers tournament activity. Uh, online tournaments for Super Smash Brothers doesn't really, in, in its current, the, the way Smash Online currently works, doesn't really seem viable. Um, the, the online for that is kind of bogus. Um, and, you know, especially if you're getting to, like, high-level um, competitive play, I don't really know how, uh, you know, it just, it just doesn't hold the candle to the rest of these. Yeah, and I know the controversy from earlier, or I guess from last year, was that an online tournament wanted, that wasn't Evo, um, wanted to do a hacked version of Melee that allowed for online play, and that's where Nintendo stepped in and was like, no, we're not allowing that. So it does seem like it would have to be ultimate, I would guess, that if anything were going yeah. to show up there. Yeah, but the, um, the, the way the, the net code works for that is uh, in, in, insufficient for like tournament level play. So. And then finally, a reminder that the festivities for Mario's 35th anniversary come to an end on March 31st. So wow. uh, get in those last rounds of Mario 35, um, if you have been interested in picking up a su- copy of Super Mario 3D All Stars, uh, particularly if you were like hoping to get it digitally, sup- like they've told us March 31st is the last day you're going to do this at least for a while. Uh, it feels I I don't know like I have not put a lot of time into Mario 35, but I feel like I should give it a, at least another go. I just yeah, feels give weird it a, a that, farewell play. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just kind of can't believe that we're at the end of it. Yeah, I mean, I of of less import, but uh, still uh, good to note. Um, the uh, Famicom Fire Emblem is also leaving the, or supposedly leaving the the eShop on on the thirty first as as well. Um, and all of this is just like uh, 
they've said that that's what's going to happen. Um, but they also, you know, uh, last year when that, um, the rabbit jump ropes video game, uh, was, uh, pre- do you remember this? I forget jump, mm-hmm. jump rope challenge, maybe is what it was called. Um, and they said that, that, that they were going to take that down after a couple months and then didn't, and it's still there. Um, so maybe this will follow the same trajectory or maybe Nintendo means no. it this time. You no, there's, this there's time? no, there's no way. I think after as much like crap as they took for um saying that this stuff was limited time yeah. that to like then be like just kidding would not fly would i be surprised if all this stuff goes away for like six months a year or whatever and then eventually super mario 3d all-stars shows up in some like player's choice line down the road you know and if you like yeah. no that wouldn't surprise me but i would be shocked if like april 1st they're like thrown over up the covers and being like and now mario 36 is live Oh. or mario 99 <gasps> <laughs> be too many marios uh yeah so let's let's uh let's spend a little time wait the 31st is after after this weekend right so we we still have this weekend to play oh yeah i think you're right yes yeah it is yeah. uh sometime next week all right perfect so so we've got a little bit of time get in our last couple rounds of Super Mario 35. Maybe I'll finally find out whether Luigi is or is not a playable character in that game. Oh, I no. Promise, this is one but... of those things that, like, we may just, like, never know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, all right, Mark. Let's close out the news. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts if you like the episode. You can share it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you share stuff. We appreciate it when you do that. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nincart Society. There's also a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by 8 You can get more of his music by going to 8 or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying thank you. For listening. Hey, Oscar, Rachel, do you like Disney movies? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen all of them? Yeah, we saw all the Disney animated movies. And we saw all the Pixar animated movies, too. How about the DCOMs? What? The Disney Channel original movies. You should listen to our podcast, Inside the Disney Vault, because we are watching all of them in chronological order. Yeah, and we do fun segments, like we cast each other. That's right, and my favorite segment, Zaddy Watch, where we rank every single DCOM daddy. Ooh, you can listen to all this fun stuff on our podcast, Inside the Disney Vault on Campfire Media wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, guys, let's get back in the vault. It's cold out here. Campfire.